In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to get your survey results into Google Spreadsheets. So on your screen, you see a spreadsheet. Well, let's first actually first look how to get to Google Spreadsheets and how to open one. Uh, if you are logged in to your Gmail account, you'll see these nine dots up here in the upper right. Click on those. Click on Sheets. And that will take you to your Google Sheets page, and you can click on the blank to create a new blank one. If you already have one made, you can click on those. Here is one that some students made in a previous semester. This is not ideal. I chose this one not to embarrass these students, but to show you uh, a spreadsheet that will work, but that is not ideal. It can be improved on. So the basic way to set up a spreadsheet for survey results is that each column is one survey question. Each row after the first row is one individual who answered the survey. So typically in the first row we would want to put the survey questions. These students chose to put Q1, Q2, and so forth. That's okay, but it, you have to be able to remember what each, what question was Q1, which question was Q2. It's better really to write them in there. So I'm just going to replace that with uh, a sample question. How old do you think a candidate should be before they run for president? I just typed it in there and hit return. And now you can see that it's, I can't see the entire question. It's up here, but it's not showing in the cell. There's a way to fix that. Go to, first we select the entire row. So click on one, and that will select the entire row one. Click on format, go down to text wrapping, and choose wrap. And now we can see the entire question. It made the it made this the entire row taller to to accommodate that question. We can make the row we can make make each cell wider if we want. The way to do that is put your put your pointer on uh, put your cursor on the line between A and B, so it looks like that, and then just drag it over. And there you go. So that looks a little better. So my my recommendation for you when you enter your survey data, start by entering your question in row one. It's question one put the text for question two and so forth. That way you know exactly what was asked for each question. It's easy to look at. You don't have to remember what was Q1, Q2, and so forth. Another thing you want to do is select the entire row, go up to View, and choose Freeze. Choose Freeze one row like that. And now I can scroll up and down in my data, but row, row one remains there. So I can always see what question I'm looking at. So that's full through the data. So you do that by freezing. I usually like to bold row row one too as well. Okay, now we want to enter now we've got the questions entered in the spreadsheet. Q1, Q2, Q3, and so forth. Now we want to enter the responses for each respondent, each person who answered the survey. So each row represents one person. So row two. Uh, row 2 represents one person who said A for Q1, C for Q2, A for, A for Q3, and so forth. Row 3 represents another person. That's her answers right there. Row 4 is yet another person who only answered one question and did not answer any of the other questions. So that's how we do it. The columns are the questions. The rows are the individual people who answered the survey. Why do we do it that way? Couldn't you do it the other way around? You could, but it's like driving on the wrong hand side, the wrong side of the road. Uh, you might be able to get where you're going, but you're going to have a lot of problems. It's better if you just do it the way I tell you. Put your questions in the columns, and each respondent as a row. Now, what if you did a survey on Google Forms? Let me show you how to, how to deal with that. Here is a survey we did um, back in 2015 with Google Forms. And to get this into a spreadsheet, go over here, you click Responses. And nobody's actually responded to the survey. This is one, uh, one I set up, but I did not implement. But assuming that people had responded to it, to get them into a spreadsheet, I would go over to this little green icon here. You see this green icon with the lopsided cross in it? That is Google's icon for a spreadsheet. So I click on that, and it is going to open. Oh, actually, we did get some responses for this one. It opened the spreadsheet. And you can see it has each of the questions. Row 1 has each of the questions as the column headers. And then each of the subsequent rows is one individual. And it shows what time these 
these people took the survey. If you want to save that, you can. If you want to get rid of, if you have information you want to get rid of, you can just select the entire column by clicking on A, and then just if you hit, actually, if you hit, there's two ways to delete. If you hit, uh, if you right click and you have delete column, well, it won't let you form data. Well, the point is, there's two ways to delete. One. One way will just take the information out of a column, but leave a blank column there. If you want to get rid of the entire column, it's better to go up to delete, uh, uh, go up to edit, and choose delete column A. Okay, so you can see, that's so you can see it's very easy to get your data into a spreadsheet from Google Forms, and Google Forms automatically sets it up correctly for you, just the way I showed you with questions in the columns and respondents in the rows. Now let's talk about how to code your responses. That means what do you put in each cell for the re for the respondents' answers? You can see the the purple koalas. They put letters. This this person who answered the survey put answered letter A, letter C, and so they gave letters for each of the possible responses. In the community survey, uh, here Google Form attached a number. So this person gave response number one for this question. Gave response number two for this question. And this one went up to response number ten. Uh, and then a third way, here's another survey we did. This has uh, words instead of numbers or letters. So some of these are open-ended questions where people could type whatever they answer, answer they wanted. With this one, though, Google, Google, Google Forms only gave them the chance to answer yes or no for this question. And it puts yes or no. In here. So if you're using Google Forms, uh, it's easy enough to just keep the words. If you're entering them by hand, uh, you can give labels to each each possible response, and you can make the labels either a letter or a number. I rec recommend making them a number. And the reason for that is if you have an ordinal survey, uh, sometimes we can perform statistical uh, analyses on on ordinal variables if you code them with numbers. So the idea is if, is if you have an ordinal variable, that means that uh, some responses represent more of a quantity and other responses represent less of a quantity. So you want to assign higher numbers to people who are claiming more of the quantity, lower numbers to people who are claiming less of the quantity. Then we can perform some, some stats on that. Uh, it's not uh, best practices stats, but we can still do it. People do it, and I'll show you how to do it. Uh, so my recommendation is if you have a question like that, let's look at this one. I'll give you an example. Here, I often go out during the daytime because I'm afraid of crime. Well, people can answer anywhere from 1 to 10. Not very true to very true. And that's how we did many of these. This one only has five numbers. What makes me afraid of crime are the chances of having my house or apartment broken into. You can answer from 1, not very true, to 5, very true. So when you have these type of ordinal variables, code them with numbers. And by code, once again, by coding, I mean uh, enter the actual number of the response for each each respondent. Okay, that's about it for making for entering your survey data into Google Sheets. In the next video, in the next series of videos, I'm going to show you how to uh, manipulate and analyze your survey data in Google Sheets.